Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a follow-up video to the washer mod video, because uh, I saw a lot of people doubt the, like, pressures that are being applied to the pins in the CPU socket. Um, and so I went ahead and managed to find some Intel documentation about this. Which is, like, I'm, I'm so glad that Intel, like, makes so much of this documentation public. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything for LGA 1700 specifically, but I did find something for LGA 2011 and LGA 1155. And, uh, basically, um, you know, LGA 1700 is going to be, pressure-wise, should be somewhere in between these two sockets, because it's in between them in terms of pin count. It should probably be closer to LGA 2011 than it is to LGA 1155, but still it'll be somewhere in between the two of them, and there's actually quite an overlap in the specifications of LGA 1155 and LGA 2011. So, anyway, let's start with LGA 1155 because it has the nicer organized uh, specs um, for the loading mechanism. And so we've got table 5-3 provides load specifications for the LGA 1155 socket with the ILM installed, so that's the loading mechanism. The maximum limits should not be exceeded during heatsink assembly, shipping conditions, or standard use conditions. Exceeding these limits during test may result in component failure. The socket body should not be used as a mechanical reference or load-bearing surface for thermal solutions. Cool. Uh, so table 5-3 is this right here, of course. And, uh, well, ILM static compressive load on processor IHS. Minimum, 311 newtons. So that's like 31 kilograms. Maximum, 600 newtons. So like 60 kilograms. Total static compressive load. So maximum pressure that you can apply to the socket. 300, or the minimum of that, or, well, no, the combined pressure of the heatsink and the loading mechanism that you can apply to the socket. Minimum, 311 newtons, maximum 822 newtons, because they literally just add the maximum mounting pressure of the heatsink, which is 222 new newtons, to the pressure of the uh, loading mechanism, which maxes out at 600 newtons. And the fact that, like, notice how the loading mechanism has, like, a really big tolerance range. The, they do not expect these things to be manufactured very reliably at all, right? Like, that is all over the place. Like, some sockets, like, it is win within tolerance for some sockets to basically put down twice as much pressure as others. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, but anyway, let's read about what these minimum and maximum values actually mean. So, these specifications apply to uniform compressive loading in a direction perpendicular to the top of, to, uh, to the IHS top surface. This is the minimum and maximum static force that can be applied by the heatsink and its retention solution to maintain the heatsink to IHS interface. This does not imply the Intel reference thermal paste is validated to these limits. And I should have said thermal interface material, but thermal paste, same thing. Uh, loading limits are for LGA 1155. Yes, of course, that's what this documentation is about. The minimum limit defines the static compressive force required to electrically seat the processor onto the socket contacts. So basically what th this is saying is if you apply less than 311 newtons of force to the CPU, like, you know, into the motherboard, um, you might have pin contact issues, as in like memory channels not working, PCIe not working, higher resistance in like power delivery pins than you should have, therefore like worse power losses. Um, like, yeah, basically you need to apply at least 311 newtons to the CPU for it to work correctly. And this is as guaranteed by Intel. I'd imagine there's some tolerance in this, like if you only applied 200 newtons, the CPU would probably still make good pin contact. Um, but I've never tested that. Or more like the few times I've run a CPU without the loading mechanism, I, I just, I sort of go about it by like, Cranking it down a little bit, see if everything works. If it doesn't, crank it down some more. <laughs> um, 
and I've had reasons when I've had, like, I've had situations where I've, I've had to run the CPU without the loading mechanism, which it's not fun because you're just kind of sitting there and like, like now you have to apply all of this pressure through the heatsink mechanism. And a lo like some heatsink, like back, like some heatsink mounting systems aren't really designed for this kind of thing. Um, and also you're applying that pressure like f way further away from the actual CPU itself. So it's way worse for like bending the motherboard and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's not, not what we're here to talk about. The, what we're here to talk about is like even the LG 1155 socket has an absolutely insane pressure spec. Like this is, this is the equivalent of like 31 kilograms uh, just sitting on top of the CPU, crushing it into the, into the pins. Um, now, with LGA 2011, this, of course, gets even higher because LGA 2011's got more pins. Um, I guess you could calculate how much how much pressure that is per pin um, quite easily. So, it, like, per pin, it's not that much pressure, right? Like, that, that's the thing is, like, if you take this number, right, like, the, the pins aren't very hard, which is, I guess, why most people doubt the, the like, how much pressure that they end up being put under. But, uh... 445 newtons, if you divide that by 20, 2011 pins, which I don't believe, I think 2011-3 actually has more pins than that, but, um, yeah, anyway, so that's 0 0.2 newtons per pin. That's, like, 2 grams of force, I think. Yeah, that's, that's around, like, 2 grams. Um, I might be wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's around 2 grams of force. So, like, a keyboard, you know, like, a keyboard key on a mechanical keyboard is usually around like 45 grams of force or maybe like 50. Um, so you'd need like 25 pins to match the force of like a keyboard key. But the thing is the socket has 2000 of the damn things. So yeah, that's, that's how much pressure, um, right? So like it per pin, it's very little, but there's a lot of freaking pins. So anyway, um, yeah, and so on LGA 2011, the minimum allowable load is 445 newtons for the loading mechanism. Then two, wait, minimum? What? They, they require that the, oh my god. <laughs> so I wasn't paying very much attention when I was reading this, I guess, because it only just hit me that they require the IHS and the loading mechanism to put down almost six, like that's like 66 kilograms. That's almost my weight. <laughs> like actually the, I could stand on an LGA 2011 socket. I could literally stand on the socket and it would be just fine. <laughs> oh, damn. Anyway, I, that just occurred to any, well, whatever. Um, uh, like, assuming I could stand on an LGA 2011 socket if I removed the loading mechanism and put a CPU in there, and then I stood on top of the CPU, that would be enough pressure to get the CPU to function correctly. That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um... I don't think the motherboard would have a good time if I tried to do that. I, I guess you'd have to put, like, some kind of... You'd have to, actually, it wouldn't be too difficult to figure out a way to make that, like, viable. Though I don't know how we'd squeeze a heatsink in there, but... Um, well, whatever. Point still stands. So, on LGA 2011, uh, the pin... So, I guess LGA 1700 has to require some amount of compression from the heatsink as well. Right? Because for 1155... Like, heatsink plus loading mechanism, it's just like 311 newtons is enough to have the socket working correctly. But for LGA 2011, they're like, no, 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 667 newtons. The heatsink has to put down at least 222 newtons, and the maximum that the heatsink can put down is 400 newtons. Um, damn. That's a lot. Like, that is a hell of a lot of pressure. Um... That's kind of, like, that's insane. So anyway, um, yeah, LGA 1700 is going to be, like, somewhere between this value and this value. And unlike on LGA 2011, where you have this lovely, you know, complicated ma loading mechanism with these two, like, these two, um, 
edges right here. That's what actually like compresses the CPU into the socket, right? You can see the big tabs over there. So the pressure is very evenly spread across the CPU and mostly um, you have the CPU sort of bow in the, in the middle upwards rather than what we have with LGA 1700, which is a stretched version of, where is it? Why didn't I, no, stretched version of this. Right, like LGA 1700 is a beefed up stretched version of this. And the problem with this being stretched is that now you have like pins really far out <laughs> that are pushing up against the CPU. Um, so, yeah. And that's, that's why the CPU bends. And then if you have a very flat uh, cooling, like if your cooling system has a very flat contact surface, you don't get good contact because the bottom edge and the like the bottom and top edge of the CPU r rise up a bit and pretty much lift wood like well I guess if you I, I guess if you crank down the heatsink to with 22 kilograms it might flatten the CPU back out but I don't think like most a lot of cooling systems will not go with um like, they're not going to have mounting mechanisms that are going to be putting down that much force. Um, yeah. So, I guess it doesn't help that I'm, like, using an Asetek mounting bracket with my water block, with my rather flat water block. And so the, so I can't actually apply a ton of pressure because the Asetek mounting bracket is a bunch of plastic and therefore just, like, it's completely pathetic. Um. Like, it's not so much supposed to, like, squeeze qu squeeze the heatsink down as it's just supposed to hold it in place. I don't, I don't think there's any way that's putting down 20. Like, you'd break the board, I think, if you tried to put down that much pressure through the Asetek, um, you know, plastic backplate thing. Um, yeah, I guess I should try a metal backplate then. But the thing is, the washer mod also just kind of works, so eh. At least it works for me. Right, and it might work, and uh, there's been other people who it's ha who it's worked for, so it's like, eh, like, yeah, I, I guess you could just, like, there's there's many ways to approach this, as far as I'm concerned, and like, the I don't I don't think like I don't consider the washer mod to be some like magical cure all your thermal you know cure all your twelfth gen thermal problems type deal. It's just kind of like in some situations it can be pretty helpful to try that. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, this is also kind of longer than it really needs to be, but hopefully gives, this gets the point across. I guess with this information, well, yeah, hopefully this gets the point across. Like, the LGA sockets, um, put, like, they need to put down a lot of pressure, because they're, like, per pin, it's very little, but there's so many pins that, in total, you, you have a lot of pressure that, that's going to be pushing um, the CPU onto them, um, so, yeah, actually, no, there is one more thing I wanted to include, um, because Intel has a end-of-life specification for LGA 2011. I don't know if they have one for, I, I, well, I didn't read through this, uh, documentation enough to find one for LGA, uh, 1155, um, but, you know, just for LGA 2011-3, it's kind of neat. So the static preload compressive, so ILM load at the end of end of life minimum is 311 newtons. Um, so basically, what this tells us is they expect that the like socket system is gonna like loosen up by 150 newtons almost uh, after whatever the and whatever end of life is meant to be. Uh, I'm guessing it's like five years. Actually, I, I wonder if we can find a definition for that. End of life. So, heat sink end of life is supposed to still be putting down 178 newtons. Yeah, but, like, I want to know what the end of life is. Okay, well, that isn't helping. So, they won't... Like, I'm guessing it's, like, five years. Maybe more than that, but... 
yeah, so they basically expect the, the, the mounting system to lose, like, what, 20, 30 percent of its pressure after some years of operation? Um, yeah, so LGA sockets, kind of crazy. Um, it's also one of the reasons why, like, with Threadripper getting, you know, good, like, Threadripper having proper pin contact is kind of an issue. And also, like, if you look at LGA 3647, which is the big server socket, right, um, from Intel, they don't include a loading mechanism because it's kind of like, yeah, you, you should, like, we, we, we can't be, like... I want. I, I guess they just gave up. It was just like, well, you're still gonna ha like it's the, like that socket is exclusively used by servers. So I guess the logic was, well, the only people who are ever gonna have to interact with this socket are people assembling servers, and they should be skilled enough to not break CPU sockets. You know, installing a heatsink. So no loading mechanism for you, um, because um, yeah. The, the loading mechanism, it, like, as the pin count increases, the loading mechanism gets sort of ridiculous. Um, and mind you, this is only 2,000 pins. LGA 3647 is, like... So, since this is... This, actually, I want to calculate this. This video is not, like, well, we're, we're near the end. I mean, you can leave now if you want to. Anyway, um, I want to do a quick... So, yeah, so that's 81% more pins. So... The min so theoretically, <laughs> you're supposed to put 120 kilograms of force on an LGA 3647. I think. Um, I wonder. There's probably a spec for that somewhere. Um, for how much force you're supposed to put on LGA 3647. But I I wouldn't imagine it's too different from what they spec for. Like, per pin, I wouldn't imagine it's too different from what they spec for their other sockets. So, yeah, it's probably something absolutely insane. And that all has to be applied by the heatsink. What a whole... Like, I am so glad I've never had to deal with an LG3647 CPU now. Um, I'm not really a big fan of, like, insanely high, like, heatsink pressures. Um, yeah. Even though, like, yeah, you know, like, I'm looking at this Intel spec and it's kind of like, man, that socket is tough. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I'm still not a fan of really high mounting pressures. Anyway, there, that's actually it for the video. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was somewhat useful and or interest, or actually mostly interesting, not really all that useful, like, Knowing this, I don't think really helps you with anything, but, you know, hopefully it was interesting. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any... I, more, I already did the leave, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the... I did that already, right? Anyway, it, I might be repeating myself. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, I have a Patreon. I also have a Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, hoodies. You know, the usual YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check out the links to them down in the description below. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.